Now, admittedly, at first, I was skeptical of the direction they were taking my beloved dragon in. The first thing that shocked me was his redesign. Spyro is no stranger to having different looks, but I think this design took the Legend of Spyro look and went a little too far. Cinder, also from the Legend of Spyro, maintained a more familiar look. These two characters are the only connective tissues linking the Spyro series together with the series we are officially starting today, Skylanders. Everything else could not be more different, but the change of direction was cool. Skylanders is a top-down action brawler with light RPG elements, where you play as a cast of many cool creatures thanks to the game's best and defining feature, the Portal of Power. This is a real-life peripheral that came with the game along with three figures that you would place on the portal and drop them right into the game. The extremely high-quality figures all store data like their stats, current level, ability skill tree, and much more. So when I brought my figures over to a friend's game, I could use my customized version of Spyro and still level them up and their ownership is under my name. Before this game, there was nothing quite like it, and it started the Toys to Life genre with games like Disney Infinity, Lego Dimensions, and Starlink following suit. Even Nintendo went hard on the figure game with Amiibos. That's what makes Skylanders such a unique experience. You could keep collecting more figures and building your roster of playable characters and even play additional levels as well. There is much more to say about the series that absolutely fascinates me, but I'll keep it short, sharing more info as we go through the games one by one. Now in terms of the game's Platinum Trophy, I remember starting the run way back on Boxing Day 2011, almost 10 years ago, but it's only recently now that I got the plat. I was missing about 5 trophies and I could not remember why. As we break down what you need to get the true Portal Master Platinum Trophy, I will show you why that's the case. Skylander Spyro's Adventure is not a hard plat to get, don't get me wrong, but it has a few challenging trophies. My renewed escapades in the game reminded me why I didn't get them in the first place, but I am sure as hell gonna help you get them right now. This is Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Before we start this trophy guide, if you're a Spyro fan, I have covered the entire Reignited trilogy here on the channel. And if you don't have those Platinum Trophies, why not check out that video and go get those three games. As well, subscribe to the channel for more Platinum Trophy videos just like this one, because you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. The Platinum run here is pretty simple and the best thing about it is it's geared towards people who have only the starter pack. First, play through all 22 chapters collecting all the elemental sources and getting the story related trophies. Then there are a bunch of collectible trophies, chapter specific trophies where you need to do a certain task, trophies related to the heroic challenges that each figure has one specifically, and lastly, one quick and easy trophy for the game's battle mode. Pretty straightforward, and as always, I'll tell you what to do in this guide. Let's talk about the thing I've been dying to talk more about. The glorious, high-quality Skylander Toys to Life figures. Not including special edition figures, there are 32 figures that you can get your hands on for the first game. I will leave a list of compatible figures below to make sure you get the right ones for this game. There are four Skylanders to play for each elemental type, and really the best way to enjoy this game is to have at least one of each type. However, the Platinum Trophy, like I said, is built around players who have the starter pack, and this is the bare minimum you will need to collect the Platinum Trophy. This starter kit includes a copy of the game, the first iteration of the Portal of Power, Spyro, Trigger Happy, and Gilgrunt figures. Gilgrunt is particularly important because there is a trophy specific to him. So if you want to beat this game on the cheap, not looking to expand your collection, finding a full starter kit for a good price is 
pretty easy now. If you are building it piecemeal, might I suggest that on top of finding a copy of the game and our three starter heroes, spring for the Skylanders Trap Team Portal, so that you can future-proof yourself for the later games. This particular portal works with all six Skylander games, and has a slot for the traps featured in the Trap Team game. You don't even need to get the PlayStation Portal either, as the Nintendo Wii slash Wii U Portal is compatible as well. The only one that's not compatible is the Xbox 360 and Xbox One portals, so be careful not to buy those. If you maybe want to expand your collection, I'll give you my recommendations for each of the other elements. Cinder is a must have for the undead element, and Terrafin is a serious boss for the earth element. Stump Smash was my favorite life element Skylander, as well as Igniter for the fire element. And lastly, Lightning Rod for the air element. For sure you gotta grab him. If you wanna take it a step further, you can get Zap, which is great for the water element, Drobot, which is absolutely amazing and he slaps for the tech element, and Double Trouble is my other recommendation for the magic class. With 32 figures to choose from, you can have a lot of fun leveling up these figures, and the Series 1 figures, which are the ones with the green bottoms, are mostly pretty cheap and easy to find. These figures are also forward compatible with the other games. However, if you do find another series version of the same hero, like the orange bottom series 2 Cinder or the blue bottom series 3 Spyro, they are backwards compatible with Skylanders 1. And most of the figures have either a series 2 or series 3 version of themselves, with a few exceptions. Oh yeah, the Platinum Run, right, I forgot all about that. I've kinda struggled over where on the difficulty scale I should put this one. It skirts the line between casual and moderate, and it's due to some of the later trophies that proved troublesome on my recent run in the Skylands. Ultimately, I decided to bump it into the moderate category, by a hair thanks to those trophies, and I'll break them down when we get there. More guides and resources will be in the description below, as well the Skylander fandom page where you can get way more information on anything Skylanders, including the figures and compatibility with this game will also be linked in the description below. Okay, that was a mouthful, but necessary to start this adventure. Or we can get this one trophy out of the way before we forget it. Let's start with the first battle trophy. And this is done in the game's side PvP mode called Battle Mode. All you will need to do is take two of your Skylanders and make them fight in Gladiator Arena Combat. This will require a second controller and optionally a buddy if you have one close by. It can be in any modes and you just have to complete one match. An easy 5 minutes to get this one trophy and then you can head into the main campaign. But of course you'll need a second controller, so if you don't have one, borrow or steal one. But mostly borrow one. Okay, now we can start the adventure. Our second trophy will pop as soon as you place your first Skylander on the portal, getting you the Hello Skylander trophy. Your toy figure has officially come to life, in-game, and you can use it to cruise through the rest of the first level called Shattered Island. Completing this level will get you the Home Sweet Home trophy, but you will get a couple other trophies as well while adventuring through. There's the unmissable Chompy Chomper trophy when you take out 15 of these little green creatures called Chompies. This is a requirement to progress through the level. Next, you should head into one of the elemental gates for the Inside Power trophy. These are unlocked using a Skylander with the required element, and the first level has three gates, one for each of the elements of our starter figures. Inside these gates you can find all sorts of goodies, like treasure chests. Your first treasure chest will get you the Happy Hour trophy, and lots of money that you can later use to buy upgrades for your Skylander. Other things you will find are these big present boxes that will give you hats. You will get the Fashion Stylist trophy when you equip your first one. These hats are great for giving certain stats a juicy bonus like speed, armor, or elemental power. The Fashion Elite trophy will pop when you eventually find 10 of these hats. Some of the later level ones are going to be really clutch for later missions because they offer you big stat bonuses. 
After this tutorial level, you will arrive in the main hub world where you will return after each mission. This is where the magic happens, most of the time, literally. After a few missions, when the fairy Persephone joins your cast, you can spend that hard-earned treasure to get upgrades for your Skylanders. You will get the trophy, I love shopping, when you buy your very first upgrade. For one of your Skylanders, you will need to buy all the upgrades to get the Gotta Buy Them All trophy. And if you are only rolling with the starter pack cast, specifically you should do this for Gilgrunt, cause you will need it for later. Along the upgrade path, you get to choose a path that leads to different upgrades. But don't worry, you just need to buy everything that appears in the shop, including the ability that can only be purchased once you have their soul gem. These said soul gems are another thing you can find out in the field and inside elemental gates, and they unlock a new ability for each Skylander that you find. Plus, when you find them, you can watch a cool clip of the Skylander in action because it's the best way to sell toys. Gotta show you guys with the starter pack what you're missing out on. Get those figs fam! But don't worry, if you don't want to buy more figures, you can just find 10 soul gems for the trophy, the spiritual mentor, just with the elemental gates you have access to. Same situation with finding 10 of the rarer legendary treasures for the treasure hunter trophy. These are also sometimes on the main path or inside the elemental gates. You just need 10 of them, but if you have the figures to collect them all, these legendary treasures give you a nice money boost for whichever Skylander picks it up. Now before we leave the hub world, let's take care of two more trophies. After you rescue Kali in mission 2, you can take on some heroic challenges. Completing your first one nets you the new challenger trophy, and kudos! These heroic challenges are often not easy, especially considering they have a time limit. When you first place a Skylander on the portal, you will unlock the heroic challenge associated with that Skylander. For the trophy Can't Stop Me, you will need to beat 3 of these. So again, for our starter pack players, 3 Skylanders equals 3 heroic challenges. So we are good. All it means is that people with more figs will have more challenges to choose from. Now, you will be on your way to collecting all of the elemental sources and collecting these 8 trophies that I'm gonna pop on screen right now. That will take you to chapter 21, once you get the elemental magic source. And then there is one more chapter to beat and that's Chaos's Lair. We will revisit this place for another annoying trophy, but you just need to fight Chaos and complete the level to get the Savior trophy and finish the main campaign. The absolute hardest thing in this level, besides the fight itself, is Chaos's incessant and unskippable monologuing. Holy smokes, okay, damn, we get it. You are the great Chaos! And where the heck have I heard this voice before? Oh. In fact, with the game's all-star voice cast, you will be saying that a lot. Patrick Warburton, Suma Lee Montano, Patrick Horvitz, Michael Yurchak, Laura Bailey, and even Josh Keaton as Spyro. Along the way, you will be gaining XP and leveling up your Skylanders till one of them gets to level 10 and you get the trophy Climb to the Top. With all your figures, you should be clicking ownership to make sure you have them in your collection, because you can increase the amount of XP you gain based on how big your collection is. With my collection size of 30 some odd figures, that got me a plus 250% XP boost that was leveling up my guys really quick. But if you are rocking the original 3, by the last chapter you should be at level 9 or 10 when you reach there. Finding the story scrolls will help you get there faster, plus you need 10 of them for the archaeologist trophy. These scrolls give XP to the Skylander that picks it up, and you will find a whole bunch of them out there great way to help level your Skylander to 10. When you finish each level, you will have a chance to collect 3 stars based on the things you do in the level, and you will need to collect all 3 stars for a single level to pop the Star Chaser trophy. The first star is given just by playing through it and completing the objectives. The second star is gained by beating the level under a certain time, so speedrunning the level essentially. 
The third star is for collecting all the collectibles in the level including the presents, treasure chests, story scrolls, soul gems, and the legendary treasures. The first level, the Shattered Island, is the easiest one to complete and get this trophy. But just take note that when you fire the cannon for the first time, you will have to fire it again to uncover the legendary treasure. Hint, hint. The second and third stars are almost impossible to grab at the same time. So focus on one or the other and do an additional playthrough for the last star. For the speedrun star, use a character like Spyro that has a charge attack to speed through the level and also skip the cutscenes. With all those trophies out of the way, we have a handful of level specific trophies left to grab and then we can close out this platinum run. But if you've made it this far into the video, let me know by dropping a like so I can see you or leave a comment letting me know how you've enjoyed it so far. But now, let's finish the platinum run in style. We shall start with the Leviathan Dentist in Chapter 7, where you will need to use a Water Skylander and step out onto the water parts of the islands, where you will shortly be paid a visit by the Leviathan himself. Jesus, this scared me the first time it happened. Once you are inside him though, you can get out by shooting his uvula to spit you out. For the trophy, you just have to do this 5 times. Then in the boss fight later in chapter 7, time to get the annoying trophy, Phew, that was close. To get this trophy, you have to dodge 30 sharks without a shark hitting you when Chaos starts sending out his elemental water spell. But it's not enough to just get out of the way of the shark because there is a special way to dodge them. You need to get close to the shark until everything goes into slow-mo and you will know you have dodged successfully when you see the green prompt telling you you have gained life. You can try and do this trophy for the first and second spells but trust me it's really hard to do and there's a cheese for it. Wait until you face off against all three evil Skylanders and then eliminate each one except the evil Gilgrunt. Then ride out the oncoming shark attack until all that's left is the wave of sharks flowing along the sides of the arena. Now you can just stick your Skylander in this spot where he will always be dodging the sharks without having to worry too much. You can still be attacked by the evil Gilgrun, but it's okay if you get hit by him and it won't restart the shark dodge count. What you will have to look out for is if he knocks you into the wave of sharks cause that will restart the count. Get 30 dodges in a row in this fashion and the trophy is yours. Next a much easier trophy, get me if you can, can be obtained if you complete all of chapter 8 without getting hit by any of the rolling barrels. Now if you want to have some fun you can bob and weave through them to show off but I'll tell you the truth, you can just attack them. Just shoot the barrels and make your way to the enemies, super easy trophy on a super fun level. Now on to chapter 11 for another easy one. Get the trophy no rockets fired by doing just that, avoid using the rockets and take the chainsaw tanks out the old fashioned way, once you make it to the end you will get the trophy. But before you're done, you have the chance to get the dodgeball trophy in the chaos minion boss fight. You have to wait until evil stump smash pops up and then you will have to whittle his health down until he has a sliver of life left. Now you are primed to get the trophy. You will need to wait until there's 5 seeds rolling around the arena. Not the big ones that go away too quickly, but the little ones that tend to stick around much longer. Once there are 5 small seeds sent out, then finish up evil stump smash and the trophy will pop once you finish the level. Mind detector is the next in chapter 12 and there is a minefield you will have to maneuver through unscathed to pop the trophy. But as part of the level objectives you will have to compile the 4 pieces of a map that shows you the route to walk through the minefield. So potentially this one could be unmissable so long as you don't go sticking your paws and claws where they don't belong. Come on man, don't play with that explosive device. Now we jump to yet another one of Chaos's minion fights in chapter 17 for the tag me if you can trophy, where you have to avoid getting hit by these lasers the whole fight. This one can be a bit annoying while you learn the patterns, but if you do get hit, just know that you don't have to start all over from the very beginning of the level. 
Let your Skylander get killed and then hit the restart chapter button. Instead of taking you to the very beginning of the chapter, it will start you at the beginning of the boss fight. Just keep trying until you get it. It's one of the tougher trophies, but it's doable. Chapter 18 in the Molkin Mine, you are able to break rocks with your pickaxe. This is important for the I Love Smashing trophy, where you need to find and break all the rocks in the level. For this one, I have included a guide in the description below because even though you could find them all naturally, some of the rocks have sneaky placements and I personally had trouble finding them all the first few times I played the level. Here is the trophy I was speaking about before that requires you to use Gilgrunt. It's called Call Me Fireman and it requires you to beat all of Chaos's evil fire minions only using Gilgrunt's water hose ability. This is probably the second or third most difficult trophy in the game and I highly recommend you do this after Gilgrunt is level 10 and with all his upgrades and a hat that either increases his armor or his elemental power. If you invest in his hose ability when it's time to choose an ability path, this fight might even be more manageable. And if you have his soul gem and buy his jetpack, again you will be in much better shape. Even with these things though, this was still a tough fight. Evil Eruptor was easy to take out from a distance, but Flame Slinger only gives you a small opportunity to attack him. And Sunburn requires you to reposition yourself constantly. And then you have to take on all three in the end. The hose is pretty good upgraded, but it's still awkward to use because you can't move and use it at the same time. I died quite a few times trying to do this one, especially facing all three evil Skylanders. If you do die though, it's the same situation as the laser traps. You can restart from the very beginning of the boss fight. Good luck with this one and upgrade Gilgrunt to the max. Our second last trophy takes place in our second last chapter. For the trophy, the Ace Pilot, you have to shoot or punch a total of 30 enemies throughout the sequence where you're piloting the War Machine robot. This trophy is not hard at all and will come naturally in this on-rail shooter section. Just make sure you're shooting at everything. Alright, here we go. The last trophy before we get the plat and the hardest trophy by far in this run. It's called One For All and what you have to do is beat the last boss chaos with only one Skylander. Just one. That may sound easy on the surface, but people who have gotten this trophy already and people trying to get it right now know how tough this trophy can be. Before we proceed, I know that you know these guides are spoilerish in nature, but I am extending a spoiler warning here just in case you want to go into this fight fresh for the first time you play it. If you don't care about that, proceed. Okay, so here's the strategy. First, make your way through the level and into Chaos's lair. It's not a long level, but it's definitely trying to whittle down your Skylander army with these cheap ass Electro Claw things and the sheer amount of enemies it's going to throw at you. When you make it to where Chaos is waiting for you, make sure you're using the Skylander you want to use in the fight before you start, or else make the switch, die, and then restart the chapter. For the Starter Pack clan, I highly recommend that you use Gilgrunt, fully upgraded, head to toe, level 10 and with the best hat you can equip on him, preferably one that gives you raw damage. Cause once you start the fight, you're gonna notice that Chaos is spongy with lots and lots of health. He doesn't give you a lot of chances to hit him either, so you're gonna have to make them count. So the ultimate strategy to do this is to take on his minions who drop health pickups when they are taken out. Even when you're at full health, it's always good to know that when it gets low, there is a health drop on the battlefield that will never disappear. Chaos's minions come in waves of three, with each more ferocious as you go. While fighting the evil minions, avoid damaging Chaos when he's on the battlefield, because if you hit him enough times, he will send in the next wave of evil minions and you will miss your chance to get those health drops. I can't stress this enough, these health drops are the only thing that's going to keep you from dying in this fight. Oh, and I forgot to mention that while you are fighting those minions, you are periodically going to get attacked by a four-headed Hydra. 
a freaking Hydra. This beast is kinda a pain in the ass and he will attack you with one of his four heads. The life dragon is easy to defend against and the undead laser dragon won't do too much damage to you. But the fire and water dragon heads will do some serious damage with their attacks. Hey look, the sharks are back. Keep the massive multi-headed hydra in the back of your mind while you are fighting the minions. But back to dealing with them now. The first two waves of minions are not so bad. But once the third wave with ghost roaster shows up, you will have to start prioritizing dodging the attacks. And then the fourth wave is absolutely brutal with Gilgrunt, Hex and Flameslinger all being Skylanders that can get you from range. If you're gonna die, it's gonna be here. Once you defeat that wave, Chaos will stop sending in evil minions and for the rest of the fight will cycle between the Hydra attacks that you will have already seen before. For the rest of the fight, dodge these attacks and take out Chaos's remaining health. It's a long 20 to 30 minute fight and I have a confession to make. I wanted to beat this trophy using Gilgrunt for the video, but no matter how I tried, I just couldn't do it. I'm sorry starter pack crew, I just could not do it with him. I eventually switched to my maxed out series 2 cinder, which I built up her ghost dash ability path. This made it so I could dash at them, drop my ghosts that attack the minions and stay invincible mid dash with iframes. This ended up making the fight a lot easier. I understand if you don't want to expand your collection too much, but for heaven sake, to make this easier, seek out a series two cinder with the orange bottom. If you will be playing Skylanders Giants, Cinder comes right inside that starter pack. So it'll be worth it for you to grab it in the end. No matter who you end up beating this challenge with, once you defeat Chaos, the all for one trophy will pop after the credits roll and you will return to the hub world. And if you've been following this guide and collecting the trophies and a bunch of amazing high quality figures, congratulations. You will be awarded the True Portal Master Platinum Trophy for Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Overall, Skylanders Spyro's Adventure is always going to be a wonderful game to play from start to finish. This is my third time playing through it, and I've got to level up my squad of figures and add new members to the crew. For this first entry, there's no better time to get in on this experience, considering the figures are cheaper than when you found them in stores, and you can find the starter packs pretty cheap as well. And if you're going for the Platinum Trophy, it's just the right amount of challenge. All the trophies can be obtained with the starter pack figures if you put in the work to upgrade the figures. Even all for one, even though I couldn't do it myself with Gilgrunt. People have done it already before, and I should give it another try. I will say that if you're put off by the collecting aspect of the experience, then maybe this game is not going to be for you, and that's okay. It's time to get off the train. But for everyone on board who is just getting started, we are heading to our next stop. Skylanders Giants. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's definitely a little more wordy than I anticipated it to be, but that's because I had to explain the figures and everything. And I think all the primer that I put in is gonna help you with this platinum trophy, as well build an amazing collection of figures. I absolutely love taking a look at all my figures and knowing that they're leveling up as I play through the games and they're all going to be compatible on the later titles. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe because we will be going into Skylanders Giants next at some point. And there's also more games and trophy guide videos coming down the pipeline very shortly. So definitely stay locked to the channel for more trophy guide videos. I wish you guys good luck on your trophy hunting expeditions and peace out.